Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. I will open my mind. I will listen to the spoken word. I will read and follow in the written word. I will understand how the word is used and explained. And I, and I, and I will use this word for myself. Oh, hallelujah. Tell somebody you love them and have a seat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. God is a good God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, for those of you that, that you don't, don't feel as though there's not space for your poinsettia, you know, you, 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 know you, you, you were thinking about getting a poinsettia and you saw some up here already. There's still room for yours. Still room for yours, amen. I'll make room for yours. I'll make room for it, amen. Praise the Lord. Today we're going to go to Matthew 11, 2 to 5. We want to keep, you know, our, the hearts are heavy. A, 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 a lot, the uh, Lord has called a lot of people home. And we don't understand everything that God does, and we will never understand everything that God does. So from the, from, the, from the oldest, I have a, a friend of mine that uh, lost her mom to um, a baby that we blessed here. I mean, a baby that we blessed here this year. Just this morning. Just this morning. Amen. And then and Brother Richard, lost, they lost their brother-in-law. Amen. Amen. So we're... You know, God, God, God does what God does. Amen. And we don't, but, but we know, amen, God is in control. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we, we, we're keeping all of those families in. Matter of fact, the, 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 my friend that lost her mom, she did the face painting at our picnic. And you guys remember the face painting? She did that for all the kids. And so, and so that, you just keep, we keep all the families in, in prayer. Amen. Amen. Matthew 11, 2 to 5. Matthew 11, 2 to 5. That's why we do what we do. Amen. That's why we are here. Amen. First, to secure our place in heaven. And then second, to get what we need to help our family. Because we are all living to live again. None of us will, 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 will live past the time God calls us home. Amen. Amen. Every last one of the people that God... Uh, 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 raised from the dead in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we don't see them today. God still called them home. Amen. Amen. So, little thing. Matthew 11, 2 to 5, the word of God reads, John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard about all the things the Messiah was doing. So, he sent disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one? Are you the Messiah we've been expecting? Or should we keep looking for someone else? Amen. Last week we started, even though it was a continuation, we started in a, on a new thought with the same continuation uh, dealing with Jesus as Lord and Savior and salvation and sanctification. But we, we, we started talking about seal and purpose. Purpose and seal. And so we, 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 we talked about that. We know that even in today's time there, uh, we use seals on containers, we use seals on bags, we, we use seals on uh, 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 pop can. I mean, we, we use seals on everything to, to preserve. Matter of fact, what, what was that? Tupperware created a billion dollar business because so that they could seal in 
the flavor, seal in the context, to, to keep them fresh. So as we talked about um, seals, we, we, seal was connected to purpose. Because even when we think about the purpose of whether it is your cornflakes, whether it is the minute you pop that seal on that pop can, you have a very limited time before the fizz is going to go away. Unless you find some way to reseal it. And so we, 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 we began to look at seal and we began to look at purpose because they, even in, in those things, you know, it has a purpose. My, you know, purpose of my cornflakes is to stay crunchy. It's to stay fresh. If they, 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 and to be a good breakfast. If, it, if, if, the, if the seal is broken and they get stale, they, they lose the purpose. I don't want to eat them no more. So, so, you know, it is to remain fresh, to, to be unchanged. And so we learn that God placed his seal on us to preserve our purpose. All right? We, we know that the word of God is said in Ephesians 1 and 13. It says, in whom ye also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And that in, in, in that particular um, um, passage, we, 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 we are sealed uh, uh, with the Holy Spirit that was promised to us when Jesus left. So we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And so we have purpose inside of us, and that purpose is sealed. We, we talked about it in, in, in Bible study, and, 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 and it was a great uh, 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 analogy. Um, as a matter of fact, talk, talk to me one of them peppermints right there. This is talk to me a peppermint. You, you got to get my wife with it. Oh, man, you just going to hand it to me. See, you, my wife would have done that, man. You throw it to me. <laughs> But we talked about when the, the, the Bible says that, that uh, uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon us, or, or, or a compound word, up on. And I thought about this peppermint because somehow, you know, one side had to be open and then it had to be slid in. And then the other side sealed up. And so that, 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 that plastic came up on that peppermint. And then it was sealed in. And so, so I can imagine in my Holy Ghost, you know, field imagination that the, the Holy Spirit came up on me from, from, from the bottom to the top and, 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 and sealed me. Yes, Keep me fresh yes. to make sure uh, I, I kept my purpose. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. And so when we, when we look at that, well, thank you, Jesus. We begin to, we, we, we begin to want to make sure what that, what that purpose is, right? Because it's, it's, it's important. When, when we look at Jeremiah 1 and 5, you know, and I, and, I, and I look at this, it's interesting to know that, well, let's look at Jeremiah 1 and 5 before I tell you what's interesting about it. It says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth, out of the womb I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And so as I, as I thought about this, and, and it made me think about other things in, in the Word of God, that, that, that purpose can be given before it's time to perform. Even in this case, before you even form, be performed. Before, you know, there, there was purpose that was thought of for you. Before, you even, before the nine months of gestation even happened, there was already purpose for you. Amen. Amen. Some of us still wandering around, walking around, talking about, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know what, what, what my life is. It's already been, it's already there. It has already been given. You just have to uh, 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 get yourself connected to the one who gave you purpose. See, so you're trying to find purpose in all the uh, wrong places. But purpose can be given before it's time to perform. I mean, we only have to look to Samuel. 
to David, to Samson. Purpose was given uh, uh, before they were even born. Purpose was given when they were young. Purpose was given, I mean, but, but before it was time to perform. Not all of them before they were born, but all of them before it was time that they were to perform. So sometimes some of us, you know, somebody a, 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 a prophesied. I still believe in prophecy and I still believe in prophets. People who God talked to and tell you, you know, tell you what thus saith the Lord uh, concerning you. I still believe in that. I've had it happen to me. I've had people come up and talk to me about things. There is no way in the world they could, could say anything about it. No way in the world they could know anything about it. But see, the problem was it wasn't for that time. You can get it and you can hear it and, 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 and sometimes you might want to run with it, but you don't have what you need. This is what's supposed to happen, but you still got to build and then you got to put something on top of that. Then some got to go on top of that and some got to go on top of that. And then when you get to here, you're ready to do what they told you when you was here. So you get purpose, but sometimes purpose is before the time to perform it. A lot of times we don't understand that. And a lot of people are crushed. And a lot of people walk away from purpose because it's not working for them the way they want it to work for them. When they want it to work for them, they're not willing to wait on God. That's what the Bible tells you so many times. Wait, wait, I say on the Lord. Wait, 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 wait. You just got to go through the Bible and it's just telling you to wait. Be patient. Wait. And so as, as, as we look at that description that, that I read earlier, John was in prison. And he, he, had, he still had some loyal disciples because he was John the Baptist. He was baptizing folk, making way for the coming of the Lord. He's in prison now. And so he, 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 he sent that message to, to Jesus. But, 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 but in order to understand what's going on, we, we have to look at, you know, it, it starts with his father. In Luke, in Luke 1, 13 to 17. Because it, it, we, we have to first establish purpose. To understand why he's asking the question. And so in Luke 1, 13 to 17, it says, but the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. That's, that's, that's John's father. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You, you will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. Wow. That ain't even my message. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other, or other alcoholic drinks. So that's just telling you what your alcoholic drinks that you drinking and sneaking is doing in the eyes of the Lord for you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ah, that ain't even my message, but I just get Because I didn't even see that there just now. I just, oh, hallelujah. He will be filled... With the Holy Spirit. And I don't even, you know what, that just hit me. You know what, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't do one or the other. And wow, this is connected. He can't drink in order to be filled. Right, 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 right. Dang. <laughs> Woo. All right, all right, I just saw that. I'm, y'all, thank you for Holy Ghost Revelation. I just saw that, y'all. So it, excuse me if it take me a little time to get past that, but I just saw that. And I've read this because I had to put it together, but I just saw that. Because the, the Holy Spirit will not compete with any other kind of influence in your life. So if you're under the influence, then he, he'd be like, well, you be under the influence of the alcohol because I don't want nothing to do with that. You, just, you can't be under the influence of me and that. All right, that's another message. I'm, I'm, I'll get back to that one. I'll get back to that and it says, and he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. Talking about John. He will be a man with the spirit and the power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. 
He will turn the heart of the fathers to their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Then it drops down to, let me drop down to Luke 1, uh, 75 to 77. It says, and you, my little son. Now he's trying to say that was but when, when his son was going to come and his wife was going to get pregnant and what was going to be his son's purpose. Now he's talking to his son. Son has been born. Son has been named John. And he says, and you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sin. Now it's interesting to, 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 to know, you know, like I said, with, when there is purpose, there must be a seal. When there's purpose, you have to look for a seal, right? And, and, and John had purpose, and we saw that the Word of God says, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is his seal. So here is a ch- here's first the child, the, the child, and if you read the whole passage, you will find three things happen. One, the child was filled with the Holy Spirit. His mama was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then after his father went through the punishment that he went through for doubting God, then, then and being deaf and, 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 and don't, couldn't say nothing, he couldn't speak, then he, he was filled with the Spirit. So now you have the whole family filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Why? So that the son won't, won't, won't break the seal of his purpose. Because not only do, the, 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 does John need the Holy Spirit, but while he's growing, he needs parents that have the Holy Spirit and, 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 and so that, that, that they can continue to, to, to do what's right for him so that he can grow and be able to do what's right for God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's why when the family, oh, thank you, when that family uh, 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 accepts Christ together, and the family, and the, the, the daddy and the mama, and everybody got filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, devil can't even come in here. Don't even, don't even try to come in here. Don't even try to come in here. No, no, no. You, 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 some things will happen. The world is out there, but you won't have no power in here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Okay. Hallelujah. I'm just, I'm just showing you how God did it. God, that everybody got filled. But I got a question. What? I mean, because it's, it's, it's good to have purpose. Amen. Right? But what happens when your purpose has to end? I mean, you know, things is rolling along and things is going well. But what happens when your purpose has to end? And then so another can begin. I mean, think about it. Legacy. Changing of the guard. Passing the baton. All requires that one finishes so that another can take, take it up. It doesn't diminish. The, the, the first leg of a, of a relay is, is not diminished by passing along the baton to the second leg. Because it's going to take each leg in order to win. Matthew 3, 13 and 17, the word of God says, Then Jesus went from Galilee to Jordan, to the Jordan River, to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize them. See, John was looking on the outside. 
But John had no, 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 no idea about what was on the inside. And, 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 and it was a grand gesture to say, you know, Jesus, you should be baptizing me. I shouldn't be baptizing you. But, but the thing was is that he, he, he was not allowing what God wanted to take place to take place. And she said to say, look, no matter what happens, we always have to be doing what God wants to take place. And that's what that, that, that was the lesson he taught John right there. Look, we always have to make sure we're in lock and step with what God wants. Not what you want, not what I want. Because people will try to blow your head up. Man, I ain't worried. I ain't, I ain't worthy of you, man. You going you do that for me. You pray for I can't pray for you, man. You pray for me. Ain't you? Don't try to blow me up, man. You just do what God is telling you to do. So he said, after his baptism, Jesus came up out of the water. The heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And the voice, a voice from the heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. Can you imagine if, if, if somehow uh, uh, John had convinced Jesus to baptize him? I mean, he would have taken, what, what needed to have taken place would not have taken place. Well, we knew that wouldn't happen, but you see, he, he, Jesus had to be baptized so that, that, so that God could send down the Spirit, uh, uh, his Holy Spirit, and now uh, 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 anoint Jesus and feel Jesus so that he would be prepared to do what he was supposed to do. You can't, have, you can't operate outside of the will of God. Now, now, here's the thing. It's very clear that John recognizes Jesus. And, and, and it's very clear that John is, is, is zealous about what he's doing. I mean, he is telling people to repent. He is telling people to do things that had never been done up until that point. I mean, the Jewish people, they, they, you know, look, they have their days of atonement. To go down in the water to repent of your sin, that makes no sense to Jewish people. That, that is not a part of what they do. But he was asking people and, 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 and he was convincing a lot of people to go down and, 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 and make themselves ready for the coming of the Lord. You know, they, to get their hearts ready to, to, to repent of their sins and to be ready to receive salvation. I mean, these people that were following John, they were ready for Jesus because their hearts had been prepared because of John. But John could only take them to this point. He couldn't take them any further. But a funny thing started happening. Let's look at this, let's look. John 3, 22 to 36, the word of God says, And Jesus and his disciples left Jerusalem and went to the Judean countryside. Uh, and Jesus spent some time with them there baptizing people. At this time, John the Baptist was baptizing at uh, <coughs> Anon, near Salem. Because there, were pl there was plenty of water there. And people kept coming to him for baptism. It's a strange thing happening now. You got... Jesus has now started baptizing, but John is baptizing too. And John was to prepare the way for Jesus, but Jesus is here, and now he's baptizing. He is, he is doing what his purpose is, and John is doing what his purpose was. And it says this was before John was thrown into prison. Now, 25, a debate broke out between John's disciples and a certain Jew over ceremonial cleansing. And that's what we were talking about. It says, so John's disciples came to him and said, Rabbi, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan River, the one you identified as the Messiah, is also baptizing people. That's beginning to be some confusion. That's beginning to be a little division. And he said, 
And everybody is going to him instead of coming to us. And so John begins to explain because, you know, the only way John can explain this the way he's explaining it is because the seal is still unbroken. Because they can't understand it. But John has to give them an understanding of, of, of what his purpose is. And he says this, John says it is, no one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. You yourselves know how plainly I told you I am not the Messiah. You see, the regular man at this point would have gotten a, 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 a little comfortable with folks coming to him and folks worshiping him and folks following him and folks doing what he wanted them to do when he wanted them to do it. I mean, they would have got a little power hungry and power thirsty and power. But the Holy Spirit sealing the purpose was preventing that from happening. He said, I am not the Messiah. I am only here to prepare the way for him. See, we have to, I mean, even as pastors, we have to begin to realize, and we have to, you, you got to keep beating it to your head, beating it to your head. These ain't my people, these ain't my people, these ain't my people, these ain't my people. These people belong to God. I'm not the Messiah. I'm the only here to prepare the way for him. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride. And the best man is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. Look at John. John is, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I am filled with joy. Now, I ain't upset that he got 500 members. I'm not upset that he has, you know, that, that they got 2,000. I'm not, I'm not upset because he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. And I'm glad for his success. See, when you're glad for somebody else's success, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. Because, because man on his own gets jealous. And then he says something that very rarely comes in any of our mouths about anything that we do. He said, he must become greater and greater and I must become less. Less. You know, I must decrease and he must increase. That is not even in our vocabulary. We want more and more and more, and I want more and more and more. And I don't care if I have to step on you, I don't have to take yours and steal yours. And... But he said, I, look, I know what I've had and I know who he is, and I'm willing to decrease because of him. See, some of us aren't even willing to do that in our lives when we come to God. We're so, we're, we're, we're so stuck on the things and, and the relationships that we have when we brought in, that we brought into our, when we started our relationship with God, that we don't want to give it up. If God told any of us that, you know, you got to get rid of this and you got to get rid of that and you got to get rid of that in order to serve me, we start looking at, well, it took me a long time to get that. And, it, and you don't know how much time I didn't put in this relationship and you don't know. I... But it's like, I must decrease. I got to put less emphasis on me, myself, and I, and, 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 and me and mine. And put more, more emphasis on him, more emphasis on what he wants, more emphasis on what his desire is for me, more emphasis on the purpose for my life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Verse 31, he says, and he has come from above and is greater than anyone else. We are of the earth, and we speak of earthly things, but he has come from heaven and is greater than anyone else. There was nobody else talking about Jesus like this at this point in his, in, 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 in his ministry. Even his disciples weren't talking about Jesus like this, but John knew because John was filled with the Spirit of God. greater than anyone else. 
He testifies about what he has seen and heard. But how few believe what he tells them. Anyone who accepts his testimony can affirm that God is true. For he is sent by God. He speaks God's word. For God gives him the spirit without limit. I mean, he, I, I was filled with the spirit from birth. But he just, he just saw the spirit just come down and just... Whoosh, whoosh. Just, just fell down on him. So the father loves his son and has put everything into his hands. And anyone who believes in God's son has eternal life. What did they, what, when did they tell John that? When did, what, who preached that? It was sealed in him. It was in him. Nobody preached that. Jesus hadn't even preached that message yet. How is it that being sealed with the Spirit of God gives me the revelation knowledge that nobody has to even... Thank you, Jesus. Anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life but remain under God's angry judgment. And so he disbands. He disbands. I got to stop. I got to stop. You know, there can't be two visions walking around here. It has to be one vision. It has to be God's vision. Because you want to have two visions. Y'all heard that before. You have division. Well, you have division. And you have people started going, well, I'm behind John. Well, I'm behind Jesus. And who's the greatest, Jesus or John? John said, oh, let's, let's, let's squash this right now. Because I know my purpose. I know my purpose. But no matter who you are, no matter how long you've had the Holy Ghost, you know, Oh, my man. Saved, sanctified, filled with the precious Holy Ghost and five baptized. But the, the devil's still coming after you, too. He's still coming after, he's still coming after you, too. He's still going to try to, and see, the thing is, and, 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 and I said something last week, I said, he's going to try to, he's going to try to mess with your seal, but he's not going to try to mess with you. He's going to try to mess with you to get you to break your seal. He's going to try to get you to pop the top. Open the bag to, to, to break the seal. He's going to try to get you to do it by the way you live. Right? Because we, we, we read. And so we go back to the scriptures that we read in the very first, and it says, Matthew eleven two 2 to 5, and it says, John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard about the things the Messiah was doing. So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? Why? Why, why, why? Why the doubt now? Because of the circumstance. Why not the doubt when Jesus walked up and he said, you know, baptize me. I'm not worthy to baptize you. Now, he recognized him as the Messiah right then. Why not when the, the, the disciples, his disciples was trying to bring division between the two and he squelched it and said, I must decrease and he must increase. Why now? Because times ain't that good right now. It's the thing. Bad circumstances, hard times in your life. They're coming to get you to break the seal. Look, I look, I, I y'all better find out if he's the Messiah or whatever, because I'm, you know, I'm about to, I don't know what he's about to do. But he in prison, he's about to do something that has to do with keeping his ministry going. Let me call folk, call my disciples, let me get them to break me out of here. You know, I got work to do. Are you the Messiah? Or should we keep looking? We ain't in prison. You just in prison. Oh, thank you. But I love four. 
And again, like I said, I love Jesus because, again, I told you before, if I would uh, uh, portray Jesus, he'd just be the coolest person in the world. He'd have his glasses on, sunglasses on out there in the desert. And, it, and this is what he said to him. He, he said, Jesus, he told him. He said, well, you go back and tell John what you, what you have heard and seen. The blind see. The lame walk. The lepers are cured. The deaf hear. The dead are raised to life. And the gospel is being preached to the poor. Oh, Y'all remember? The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So you go back and tell John, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm living in my purpose. And basically said, and let John know his purpose is over. And we know then, at that point, John just, head was cut off, submitted, you don't hear anything else about. Because I prepared the way for the Lord. And so even as the devil was messing with him there and he, and, 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 and he just, you know, the devil's like, I don't know, you sure that's Jesus? I don't know, you might have messed up. You, you, you ain't even going to fulfill what God wanted you to do. That ain't Jesus. No matter what his head. Would y'all just go, can you just find out for me for sure? I said, that will come and, and he messes with you. He makes you want to question who you are and what your purpose is. Don't let the circumstances break your seal. Don't let the circumstances te tempt you to break your seal. You keep your purpose. But you can only break that seal. And we told you in, in Ephesians 4 and 30, do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. I don't care if you are in prison. Keep your head up. I don't care where you are and where you are in your circumstances. You keep following God. Amen. For God I live and for God I'll die. I'm in here because I was doing the will of God. I'm not going to stop doing the will of God just to get out of here. So do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, no matter how the devil is messing with you, you are still identified as his own. You have his seal. Guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. It doesn't matter if you die of old age or you get your whole head cut off. It's not going to stop what, your, what, what God has for you in, with eternal life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God, John didn't try to compete with Jesus. And see that in, 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 in our Christian life. We can take an example from John because there are a lot of people that are trying to compete with Jesus. You know, they're trying to compete with, with you know, they, look, Jesus, we say Jesus is the reason for the season. Why do we even have to say that? Because things are trying to compete with Jesus. Why do we have to say that, uh, talk about that, that Jesus is our uh, main attraction here? Why? Because you can go to other places where the choir is the main attraction. The pastor is the main attraction. The church is the main attraction. Ooh, they got bowling rings, skating rings, bowling rings. They, they got a whole lot of stuff in here. Jesus is the main attraction. He didn't try to compete with Jesus. He, didn't, he, he submitted himself to Jesus. He didn't, he didn't use Jesus to make a name for himself. He 
he continues to let them know, look, I told you from the beginning, I'm not the Messiah. He's the Messiah. I'm preparing a way for him. And through the Holy Spirit, he recognized the works of Jesus. Not once did Jesus say, you tell him I'm the Messiah. You tell him I'm the man. See, that's the thing. Are we recognizing God in our lives? I mean, somebody doesn't have to tell you when, 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 when Jesus is operating in your life. You should recognize when God is operating in your life. And if he's not operating in your life, it's not his fault, it's yours. You should be able to recognize just by the things that are, that, that, that's, that's going on. He said, just look, John can't see it for himself, but you tell him what's going on. And when you tell, tell him what's going on, John will recognize that I am who he was waiting for. See, at the, at the when we keep the seal, we keep the purpose. When we lose the seal, we lose the purpose. And you need the purpose in, in, in your home. You need the purpose in your, in, 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 in your, at your job. You know, I mean, I can, I can imagine that the seal on, 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 on Adam and Eve was, it was, was, was the glory. I mean, they, they, when, when they had the seal, they didn't even need clothes. They just walked around in the glory of the Lord. Now, none of y'all try that. I believe y'all saved. I believe you got the Holy Ghost. You don't, don't walk around. The world ain't ready for that. The world ain't ready for that. But, I, but, I, but I'm, 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 I'm letting you know that they had the glory of the Lord. And when they broke the seal, that's when they tried to hide themselves from God. And just think about yourself. Do you, do you ever find yourself trying to hide from God? You ever find yourself, I, I, I ain't going to church, I ain't going, I ain't going. I ain't going today, because you shame. Well, I got news for you. It don't make no difference if you come to church or not. You can't hide yourself from God. He's everywhere you are, so you might as well come on in church and get yourself to back together. I, I, we, we know somebody that disappeared for a minute, and he, we're like, where is he at? Where is he at? I'm just trying to get myself together. Well, come back to church. Get your help. You need the, what, the help is here. The word is here. And we can get it together by ourselves. We wouldn't have needed Jesus in the first place. Come on, we stand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is a good God. Everything that we need, everything that we need to keep this life, it's in the Word. And again, as I said before, thank God that, look, look we, when, I, when I talked last week, I talked about, y'all know, y'all about to buy those Christmas presents that you almost need a, 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 a bomb to get in. You can't get through the edges, it's so hard. You can't even cut them with scissors. I mean, you're trying to cut through it to get through the presents, and you can't. That's the kind of seal we need. We're talking about having a, a, the Holy Ghost seal, but that's the kind of seal we need to have. That's the kind of seal that, that we're, we're desiring to have, a seal that no matter how hard we try, no matter what we go through and the devil, you know, finds us at a, at a weak moment and we try to break the seal, we're like, get, get in this thing. And we keep ourselves for God. It's not that we didn't try, it's that we weren't successful. 
You come back and you repent for you repent for even thinking about it. But 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 thank be to God, you didn't. You, your seal was so tight, you just you just couldn't do it. Yeah. I'm talking to somebody. I, I, look, I've been there. And thank God for a resealable. May break, it may break, but it's not like those pop cans. Once you pop it, you can't never get that pop can to seal back up. Whatever's in that can is just gone, but, and you can't get that. But thank God for those seals that you it, 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 it opens, but you s- get it back. You get it back. Thanks be to God. I've, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God. <laughs> they don't clap too hard because some of them things you, you do too many times, they, they ain't no good no more. <laughs> they, don't, don't, don't be playing Russian roulette with the resealable thing. Because it could be open and the Lord call you home and you ain't get a chance to. We don't play Russian roulette with God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Is there one today? We thank God we have baptism tonight. Baptism tonight, yes. Baptism at 4 o'clock, amen. Amen, amen. To proclaim, hallelujah, I am what I say I am. Show to the world, hallelujah. I came in this thing one way, but I'm coming out another way. Hallelujah, I go down dry, but I come up wet. Hallelujah. It, 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 it's the show. Hallelujah. As he talked about the bride and the bridegroom. It's the same thing. You don't have to have a big wedding to get married, but we do it so that we can invite our friends and we invite our family to come and, 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 and see what we already pledged in our hearts. I want the world to see. I ain't playing with this thing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Is there one today you are not saved? You have not given your life to the Lord? It's been on your heart. It's been on your mind. It's been one of your things to do. 2015 is winding up. And we're not guaranteed another day in this year, let alone to be able to see 2016. And so as I ask, what are you waiting for to give your life to the Lord? Is there one today that would like to leave here knowing, not guessing, not maybe, maybe not, if I were to die today, I'm on my way to heaven. You don't have to worry about how many good things you've done and and, and are you a good person? God, I don't care about that. God says, I don't care about that at all because you can't do nothing without him anyway. So you can be a good person according to world standards, but if you don't accept Jesus, you, you, God looks at you as a bad person. And so if you are not saved at this very moment and want to guarantee yourself a place in eternity, I'm asking you to raise your hand with me right now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're not raising your hand, you should be clapping, hallelujah, rejoicing. If your hand is not up, you should be rejoicing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the fact that your hand just went up, you you believe in your heart because your hand just went up. God handles the heart. We're going to handle the confession part. If you had your hand up, repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I accept your son as my personal savior.
thank you, Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, y'all get on the mic if y'all want to do that. Go on, get, get on the microphone and get that done. Hallelujah. For those who have accepted Jesus as their personal Savior, look, please come up. Come up and shake my hand when this is over, my hand, my wife's Never hand. Just want to congratulate to you and welcome you into the kingdom of God. For the families that are going through going the grieving and the mourning process. For the people you come in contact with that might not be here, that might be going through the grieving and mourning process. Remember God said this one thing. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. That is a guarantee that we get at the lowest point of our lives. That God has comfort for the one that mourns. It's not an if, it's not a maybe. It's a guarantee. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, say it like you mean it. I'm never, never going back. Oh, hallelujah. Never going back. Never going back to the way it was. Come on, come on, everybody. Never going back. I am never going back. Never going back to the way. I have to live with myself. I have to live with myself. I have to live with myself. And I don't want to come to the setting sun. To the setting sun. And hate myself. And hate myself. And hate myself. For anything. For anything. That I've done. Lord. Until we come back together. Give me the strength to grow right. Give me the desire to stay right. And give me the boldness to help my brother, to help my sister, to help my neighbor start right. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we 